Hello everyone and welcome to Dandelion Lessons and this episode is about learning to see and it's just going to be some of my thoughts and a little bit of my story that I feel is really important to share and I often hesitate to share my story because for a long time I felt like it kind of lessened my credibility as an artist and as a teacher because it's interesting, I only started painting and drawing not even five years ago. And I'll tell you that story in a little bit. It's, it's kind of a crazy story. Um, but it happened very quickly and unexpectedly, completely unexpectedly. And it was one of those things where I, I, you know, I, I discovered that I had this natural ability that I had no idea that I had before. And it, my career just sort of propelled into this full-time career almost overnight. It was pretty crazy. But before I go into my story, I just want to talk about why it's important to me that you know it. Because it's not about um, the amazingness of my story or anything like that. But it's, it's more about how much I want people to know that we all have gifts. We all have gifts and we all see the world differently and we are all artists within. And my whole mission is to help people see that. I, I just want, I wish everyone in the world would draw. That's just, that's my simple wish. And I know it's a big wish, but I'm working at it. <laughs> so I want to talk to you about drawing today and, and what that really means to me. And it's it's really all about learning to see. So I hope you'll you'll stick around and listen. And I hope that you'll leave your thoughts and comments below so we can have a bit of a conversation about this. I know this is kind of one-sided, this video thing. But truly, um, it, I, I'd like it to be a conversation. And I'll also leave my email address if you ever want to email me about it. So before I get into anything else, I want to read to you a quote that I found in a book by Jane Hirschfield, a wonderful poet whom I love. And the book is called Ten Windows. I'm going to read the quote to you. One way to praise a work of art is to say it has vision. Good art and good seeing go together almost always. Yet before art's more ground-level seeing can liberate itself into that other vision we speak of, a transfiguration is needed. The eyes and ears must learn to abandon the habits of useful serving and take up instead a participatory delight in their own ends. A work of art is not a piece of fruit lifted from a tree branch. It is a ripening collaboration of artist, receiver, and world. So that's a pretty wonderful quote, and, and I encourage you to think about it for a while. And for me, it really, it really all hangs on that participatory delight in their own ends. I love that idea. And I love that idea that the act of creation, the process, that we engage in when we create art is that participatory delight. It is not the end result. It is not the piece of fruit lifted from the tree branch. It is the participation in the joy of creation. That is art to me. So I just wanted to start there and plant that seed in your mind. Um, and, and you probably already know that, but it's a really important point to me. So now I think I'll tell you my story. Um, back in, uh, see, end of March, I guess it was 2013, um, I was recently home from driving my daughter to El Paso, Texas, where she was um, starting her life as an adult. My son had been living in Ukraine for a while, and he had been traveling the world as a bass player. Um, just amazing 
my kids. <laughs> you teach them to be adventurous and follow their heart, and then they go and do it, right? So, so that's that. And then I, um, I was recently divorced, and I um, had gone through quite a bit of health battles. I had breast cancer, uh, mastectomy. I had um, a few different illnesses. I had had maybe five surgeries at that point. And I was suddenly um, trying to find my way in the world as a, as a woman um, who was a homemaker for all those years. I, I, you know, I, I stayed home and took care of my babies. So I didn't have a college degree. And it was, uh, basically I was finding minimum wage jobs. And so I came home from driving my daughter and I remember coming in the house and seeing this big pile of stuff that she had left on the kitchen table. Um, for me to give to Goodwill or whatever and within that pile there were all of her art supplies from high school Um, some of them really nice and and new and so um, to be quite honest I was feeling a little bit lost and scared and very much alone in my life at that at that time Uh, so I thought you know what I'll get up every morning a little bit early before I have to go to work and I will draw. I'll teach myself how to draw. I'll, I'll do something productive <laughs> with my time. And so I did some searching online for how, how to learn how to draw, that kind of thing, different books and stuff like that. And I found one um, by John Ruskin called The Elements of Drawing. And I really love John Ruskin and I love the style of his work. He's, it's very much a naturalist work, you know. And so I read that book and it became it became a friend, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, I couldn't wait to get up and draw every day. And when I came home from work, that's all I did. For, so from like 4 or 5 in the morning until 10 or 11 at night, in all my free time where I wasn't working, I was drawing and I was teaching myself how to draw. But I'll tell you something. Um, the amazing part was is that I wasn't comparing myself to anything. I I was I had this like deep desire to draw the things around me that I found beautiful. So a leaf that had fallen on my patio or a little acorn that I found in the woods or my cat's paw or a little teacup that I had. I mean, I I wasn't trying to do anything grandiose, you know. I was just trying to draw what I loved because it kept me company and those are the things I find beautiful that I find poetry in and so it wasn't this big grandiose kind of discovery it was something that I could do to bring solace to myself and to bring joy in my life and I started to notice that the world looked different after I started to draw So I want to show you two of the first leaves that I drew. The one on the left was actually the very first thing I ever painted with my watercolors. And um, I actually copied it directly from the cover of a book that I loved. Um, It looks nothing like (laughs) the leaf on the cover of the book, but I was absolutely thrilled with it. I just, I, I fell in love with painting a leaf. I mean, I truly did. And so that was the very first thing I ever painted. And I wasn't really seeing the leaf. I was copying the leaf. And that's a very, very different thing. It's a very different thing. We can look at something and not really see it, if, if you know what I mean by that. So I wasn't really seeing yet. And the more that I read John Ruskin and the more that I followed his lessons and the more that I spent time drawing, the better I started to see not only my subjects, but the world around me in general, and the lighter my heart was feeling. So the second leaf is one that I drew, oh, maybe a month or so after the first one when when I was really starting to look at it. And this leaf was one that I picked up off of my patio, and it was old and withered from the year before, and I found it so beautiful. There was something about the patina of it that was really beautiful to me. And so I brought it inside and I sat down and I drew the shape and I started to paint it layer after layer after layer, trying to paint exactly what I saw on this leaf. And it took me a long time, 
But the remarkable thing was, this was a transformational mo- transformational moment for me because I was truly learning how to see that leaf in front of me and to, to take my time and to slowly fall in love with that leaf and try to let my hand make the marks that it needed to make to put it down on paper. And this was the first thing that I ever painted that I felt, yes, that is that leaf. (laughs) That is that leaf. I really saw that leaf and I really took my time. And it's not hard when we're really seeing. When we suddenly learn how to see, we can draw anything. So John Ruskin says that if we can draw stone, we can truly draw anything. And so I did that lesson. And I remember going out into my driveway and just finding a little round rock and bringing it inside and doing exactly what he said, sitting with that rock and studying it and pouring my eyes over it and turning it around and over and over again and finding a position that I liked it in and then using my pen to draw that stone. And what Ruskin says is, now, if you can draw that stone, you can draw anything. I mean, anything that is drawable. Many things, sea foam, for instance, cannot be drawn at all, only the idea of them more or less suggested. But if you can draw the stone rightly, everything within reach of art is also within yours. And you know what? He's absolutely right. I have been teaching people how to draw for four years now, and I'm, I'm just here to tell you that I've seen it over and over again. If you take the time to really see something and you sit down and you're not afraid, you're not afraid to fail, you just put your pencil on the paper and you let your eyes move over it and your pencil and your eyes move together, you can draw that stone. You may not draw it the first time, but you'll draw it. You will, and it'll get better and better every time you draw something because your eyes are learning. Actually, your eyes are unlearning what your brain knows, and we'll talk more about that in a little bit. But I have seen it again and again, and and I'm, I'm telling you it is the very truth. You can draw a stone, and you can draw anything, and everyone can draw. So I want to go back to those two leaves that I painted way back in 2013. And I want you to look at those. And then I want you to see what I painted one year later, this beautiful maple leaf. And about a year and a half later, these willow leaves that I found on a walk. And then a year after that, these cherry leaves. And then a year after that, I drew these. This is what happens when we dedicate ourselves to something and when we do it every day. And I don't know. I mean, I I had a lot of time to spend on this. You know, it was, I was alone. Um, I had a a, a job that I really didn't care about. This was my life, you know, to to teach myself this. and, and And it was such a discovery for me. And I know that um, in many ways, I'm very lucky that I had the time to spend and, and, and that I took to it so well. Um, some, for some reason, I could do it. And, and that's no credit to me. That's just, that's just the truth, you know. So it's not anything that I did to earn it. It's just, it's just what happened. But what I've seen is that when you dedicate yourself to something and when you decide you want to do something and you put your time and effort in, you do get better and you can go after things and you can make them happen. But drawing, here's the thing, we don't have to have the goal of drawing a graphite drawing that is framed and and mounted and, and sold in a gallery or hanging in a museum. That is not the point. Those things happen to me and not by choice. I mean, I didn't ask for them to happen. They just happened to me. But that's not why I was drawing. And that's not why I draw right now. I draw for the process. I draw for the joy of of opening my eyes to the world and therefore opening my heart to the world. I draw for those reasons. I draw so that I could become someone who could help other people draw and so that they can open their eyes to the world around them and fall in love 
with nature and, and the everyday humble things that surround us because by drawing them, we learn how to see them and we learn how to see one another. So I wanna do a little drawing exercise with you, but first I wanna show you a couple more things. And this was my first bird that I ever painted. This is a chickadee, believe it or not, that I copied from a field guide. And then this is a bird I did not too long ago, a bird that I really saw. So you can see how my vision has changed. I've learned how to really see things, at least better than I ever have before. And while your goal may not be to draw a bird like this, I'm just telling you that by spending the time to draw every day just something sweet and precious in your life, it will open your eyes to the world in ways that you never imagined before. So right now, I want you to pause the video and I want you to go and get a piece of paper and a pencil and I want you to sit down at the kitchen table or in a chair and I want you to close your eyes and imagine the cup that you drank your morning beverage from. Just imagine it sitting on the kitchen table and then I want you to draw a very simple line drawing without looking at anything as a reference of that cup or mug, glass, sitting on a table. So you can just draw a line for the table and then position your mug somehow on the table. Very simple, just a line drawing. And when you've done that, come back to the video. So now that you've drawn a line drawing of your cup, I just want to mention a few things. When we take the time to see something, we can understand more about our subject and the world around us and about each other. We can see past stereotypes or preconceptions so we can discern what is truly there before us. And we can learn to see past the obvious or the expected and fall in love with our subject for what it really is. So now I want you to take a look at your drawing that you made and I bet it's wonderful. And I want you to look at the bottom of the cup where it rests on the table. And I want you to notice if you drew a straight line or if you drew a line that's sort of curved. Because nine out of 10 people, and sometimes I've had 100% of the people, will draw a straight line when they do this exercise. And the reason is, is because our brains are really, really smart. And our brains know that that table is flat and they know that our cup is flat sitting on the table and so our brains tell us to draw a straight line and, and that's what we do. And that comes from looking and from what our brains know. It does not come from seeing. So I want you to look at this example of a cup and look at how the bottom of it is curved. And then I want you to go in your kitchen and put one on the kitchen table and I want you to stand there and look at the bottom of the cup where it touches the table and notice that your eye sees a curve. So that is what I mean when I say we have to train our eyes to really see and not just to look and not just to accept what our brain knows. And there are so many examples of this that I could give you and in future videos, you know, we'll talk more about it. But I just want you to really understand the difference between looking and knowing and between seeing what is really there in front of you. And once that light bulb goes off and you start to really see what's right in front of you and not what your brain knows and not, and not you know, w what you think you know about it, but what's actually there, drawing becomes a very natural thing. Seeing or learning to see is paying close attention to the things a person in a hurry might miss. There was always more in the world that men could see, walked they ever so slowly. They will see it no better for going fast. The really precious things are thought and sight, not pace. John Ruskin. So friends, what I would love for you to do is sometime this week, give yourself five or 10 minutes time and sit down and find a stone 
and get a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil and spend some time really looking at that stone and trying to draw what you see in front of you the best you can. And I, I mean what you really see in front of you. Notice the texture and the shape. Notice how the light plays across it and where there, you might use scribble marks or where you might use thicker lines, where you might put darker lines and lighter lines and just try your best to draw what is exactly right in front of you. Not what you know about a stone, but what's really there. I just want you to try it. And then the next video, I'll show you a little bit more. So I want to close with one of my favorite quotes from John Ruskin, and that is, I believe that the sight is a more important thing than the drawing. I would rather teach drawing that my pupils may learn to love nature than teach the looking at nature that they may learn to draw. John Ruskin from The Elements of Drawing, and that's the book that I used um, when I was teaching myself how to draw. So. That's it in a nutshell, really. Drawing is a path to seeing, and seeing is a seeing opens your eyes up to the world in a different way, and it presents life in a new light. And I'm here to tell you that drawing changed my life. It truly did, and it's 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 my it's my biggest wish. Um, it's my biggest wish as an artist, especially is that everyone in the world would have the opportunity to learn how to draw. I believe that children should be given a pencil and paper and allowed to draw from their heart and from, from what they really see from the moment they can hold a pencil and all the way through school. I think it is a vital thing to learn. So that's, that's my ramble for today. And I hope... I hope it made you think about some things for yourself. And again, please leave comments. I would love to have a conversation about it. Thank you so very much for being here. Until next time.